people like me. You need people like me so you can point your f***ing fingers and say that's the bad guy. That's the bad guy. Okay, we'll start with this. Expanded conversation as to what the future might hold for former unified super featherweight champion Michaela Mayer. Michaela, who took to her social media and said, I've been holding out and working alongside Natasha Jonas to help get this rematch secured, but it's been difficult. Just know it's not us. We were both hoping to get it done for y'all this summer, but we only have but so much power. In my previous video, we talked about how Michaela is open to fighting Chantel Cameron, but apparently behind the scenes, she's also been working to get the Jonas rematch done. I wasn't aware they were still working on that. I half expected to see Natasha Jonas return to action this summer in a unification match opposite the ring, Ivana Habazin. Since things weren't working out with Michaela. Michaela Mayer who said, I've been in the gym preparing for a few dates that have fallen through. So I'm ready regardless. Next week, I'll head to Connecticut where I'll focus on calling the boxing for NBC's Olympics, Paris 2024. Tune in and I'll be sure to have a fight update for you all shortly after. My thoughts. I felt that Michaela Mayer did enough in the Jonas fight that she should have been awarded the decision. Quite honestly, I think she was robbed. That fight wasn't hard to score and Michaela Mayer was putting it on Natasha Jonas. I think Michaela fought the right fight. Yeah. She was aggressive, she was busy stepping into her punches and backing off the champion. She should have won. Mm -hmm. The only thing she didn't do was knock Natasha out. That's the only thing she didn't do. And because she didn't, well, that's why we're here now. The door was open for some home cooking. And now Michaela's career is lacking a sense of direction that they've been working on a rematch. A Jonas rematch. And simultaneously, she's open to fighting Chantel Kimran. Those are good fights. On the premise that she actually does get Natasha back in the ring, on the premise that a rematch happens, I like Michaela Mayer's chances in a rematch. I think she can make the right adjustments to maybe take it out of the judge's hands this time, the next time, because she needs to. I like a Jonas fight. A Chantel Cameron fight is tougher to edge. It's a much tougher fight to edge. Both fighters can show a bit of spite and a bit of spice, but punch for punch, I think Chantel is stronger. I think she's the harder puncher of the two. Michaela is the comparatively taller, longer fighter, but not the stronger fighter, not the physically stronger fighter, I don't think, though she is durable. She's been in there with some punchers. Maiva Hamadouche and Alicia Baumgartner at 130, Natasha Jonas at 147. Time has proven Michaela Mayer to be a very durable fighter. She's never been knocked out. I've never even seen her knocked down. Making a fight between her and Chantel that much more intriguing. If things don't work out for a Jonas rematch and that doesn't materialize, we have that to look forward to, a Chantel Cameron fight. Currently, she's gonna do some commentator work for the upcoming Olympic Games. That'll put some money in her pocket while she's between fights. That NBC seems to be doing more for Michaela Mayer than ESPN. ESPN and top rank. You know, Natasha Jonas ain't the only champion at this weight. Neither is Sandy Ryan. There's also Croatia's Ivana Habazin current reigning WBC champion. What about her? If Top Rank were really invested in Michaela Mayer, they would do what they have to do to put Ivana Habazin in the ring with Michaela. It's a winnable fight. Michaela can beat Ivana. The issue, what I think the issue is, they're not that invested and they likely don't want to have to put up the money to bring Ivana to America so Michaela can fight her here, where she would have home field advantage that the last two years of Michaela's career while it may have made sense to have a couple of fights in the UK ahead of what became a Jonas fight in Liverpool in Natasha's neck of the woods 
a part of that, at least a part of it, was that Top Rank wasn't going to pay to play. They weren't going to put up the kind of money that brings Natasha to America. So Michaela had to go to the UK. And that's how she got jerked. That's how she got robbed. So it definitely feels like Michaela Mayer, in spite of having one or two options for her next fight, her career is lacking a sense of direction traction at this point in the juncture. Well, I could go for a Jonas rematch or I could go for a Cameron fight. We'll see what ends up happening. But it does feel like Michaela's career and what she's going to do next is lacking a sense of direction, a sense of stability. Men's lightweight news, a bit of disappointing intel that comes to us by way of veteran boxing scribe Stephen Kimothy, who said, in regards to the Tank Davis versus Vasil Lomachenko fight that has been brandied about, Loma's manager, Igis Klimas, just told me, Loma is not in the mood right now. He doesn't have the motivation at the moment. He's taking off. He wants to spend more time with his family. He doesn't want to do anything until the end of this year. So he's definitely not coming to the ring till the end of this year. Well, I mean, if you were going to do a fight with Javante, it wasn't going to be till the end of this year. The fight between them wasn't scheduled to go down over the summer months. It was set to go down in either late fall or early winter. If it does go down. So he's definitely not coming to the ring till the end of this year. Klimas added that while Davis is a highly lucrative bout with Loma, just money is not what motivates him. He doesn't take it just because of money. You can offer him millions, tens of millions of dollars. If he doesn't have motivation, he's not ready to prepare for a fight. But he made it clear Lomachenko is not retired. You're the one saying that he's not motivated, so it sounds like he is. I think that that loss, that controversial loss to Devin Haney, took a lot out of Vasil Lomachenko. It's a wonder that he even came back for George Cambosos for the IBF title, though George is a guy that Loma can beat on autopilot. Even if he did beat him, even if he did stop him, where Teofimo couldn't stop him, where Devin couldn't stop him, that in and of itself, I never looked at that as Loma being all the way back, especially when you heard what he said after the fight. This is title for, for him because after any uh, I want to finish my boxing career and I, I don't need I, I took um, after this fight with Haney I was proof to my myself Я доказал все для себя. I proved to myself in this box in this sport and I don't need to continue but you know but my father I see every day every day he sent me in use with me and uh, every every time he sent uh, my last fights highlights and i feel he want he want to continue he want the title again and uh, he tell me hey we need to do one more time this one we need to do uh, fight again to uh, for title and it was it was hard decision for me because i'm tired and uh, but I love my family, I love my father. That soundbite is from immediately after his knockout win over George Kimbosos. In the man's own words, he was contemplating retirement right after the Devin Haney fight. That's not me connecting the dots or acting as an interpreter for Vasil Lomachenko's actions. He literally said that himself. Before these negotiations started, so that if you waited to fight this guy up until this point when you had seven years to do it, you waited too long. And it's not a secret that they were waiting year after year from the moment this fight became a hot topic in 2017. Floyd Mayweather, Gervonta's then handler, made it clear they were in no hurry to fight Vasil Lomachenko. So maybe when you want to do a fight, you shouldn't wait until a guy's thinking about retiring to do it. If you didn't want to do it in 2017, then you could have did it in 2018. If you didn't want to do it in 2018, you could have did it in 2019. 2019, Javante Davis moved up from super featherweight up to lightweight, where Vasil Lomachenko was a reigning champion. And who did Javante and his team choose to fight instead of Vasil Lomachenko? Yuriorkis Gamboa. What? That when you want to do a fight with a guy, you shouldn't wait until the guy's retiring to decide you want to do it. You did that on purpose. Now what do you expect? Do you expect him to be as motivated as he used to be? Should we? Are we to expect that Vasil Lomachenko is going to be the same guy with the same drive in his mid to late 30s that he was years ago? No. You could have fought him years ago. You should have, but you didn't want to because you knew it was a more dangerous fight then. It's damning, but it's damning on both sides. Both sides of the aisle, the spectrum. 
It's damning that Javante Davis waited this long to fight this fighter, but it's also damning that Vasil Lomachenko is a champion. He does have a belt. If you're done. Igus Klimas says that he isn't. Igus Klimas says that he's not retired, that he will be back, but it sounds like, mentally, He's checked out. So give up the belt. Let it go to William Zapata. Your indecisiveness may be holding up this weight class, this division. You have to make a decision. Do you wish to continue? And if you continue later on this year with someone other than Gervonta Davis that you're okay to fight, just not against him. Unfortunately, that's a duck. Much to the chagrin of many a Lomachenko fan, if he decides to come back, but he comes back against someone other than him, bad optics. I don't make the rules, and I don't decide what people think or how they're going to interpret something. If you decide you're willing to fight, just not against that particular fighter, it's a duck. Even if he spent the last seven years ducking you, doesn't change that in that situation, you would be ducking him. And of course, the cowardly assistant coach of Gervonta Davis, Kenny Ellis, immediately took to his Instagram story saying, if Lomachenko can't get motivated by a chance at being the face of boxing, your fighter is not the face of boxing. His team needs to hang his gloves to where he could never reach them again because he's done. There's a grain of truth in there. He might be. That doesn't change that you avoided him for seven years. People like you are never going to tell the whole story. People like you with very few redeemable qualities. You're a coward so is your fighter you're still a rabble of cowards to me and a lot of other people because we could have and should have got this fight a long time ago how is it that younger fighters coming up got to Vasil Lomachenko years before your fighter did Tiafimo Lopez Devin Haney what was your fighter waiting for he was waiting for Vasil Lomachenko to get old so that he can swoop in after everybody else is already done with him to dispatch what remains is America so desperate for an idol, an icon, that they would support this and turn a blind eye to the last seven years of Gervonta Davis avoiding this fighter. Yes. There are several ways to look at this. It's not my imagination that for seven years, Gervonta put distance between himself and this fight. Even if Lomachenko is putting distance between himself and this fight now, that doesn't rewrite history. Simultaneously. Where Vasil Lomachenko, 36 going on 37 years old, is now courting retirement, there's another fighter in that same age bracket that isn't courting retirement. That fighter's name is Terence Crawford. There is yet another fighter in that same age bracket that is not considering retirement. Oleksandr Yusik, he's 36 going on 37, coming off the biggest win of his career. So is Vasil Lomachenko's age really any excuse to get out of this fight? And I'd say, no, no, no it isn't. You're a champion. If you're gonna hang on to that belt, and you're gonna stick around, then you gotta do this. Doesn't change that Javante Davis waited until you got older and slower and your motivation was sapped. That doesn't change that he's a coward and he ducked you. He is a whole coward. But I mean, if you're not gonna retire and Igus says you're not retired, if you're not retired, what are you still in it for if you don't get out of bed for fights like this? If this doesn't motivate you, what will? I saw veteran boxing scribe Dake Jonathan react to the news by saying it's a massive letdown. Aww. If you can't get motivated for by far the biggest star you will face for the rest of your career, then it's time to move on to the next phase of your life. Hopefully opens the door for Tank versus Shakur, though the politics leave me skeptical. What politics? Shakur is a free agent. He's still a free agent. Aww. Things aren't working out with Loma. You can go fight Shakur. He's a champion like Loma's a champion. Jake Donovan is not the only boxing scribe echoing the sentiment, expressing it. Hey, what's up? Good morning, everybody. It's your man, Sean Zatel, going for a little walk. And I just, I'm thinking, why can't we just get Tank and Shakur right now? It's, you know, number one versus number two. They're both undefeated world champions at lightweight in their physical primes. Look, Lomachenko now saying he doesn't, well, through Igus Klimas saying he's not motivated to fight Javante Davis. Well, back in the day, Javante Davis wasn't motivated to fight Lomachenko. So he's kind of returning the favor. I wanted that fight. I liked that fight. I said that fight makes more sense for Lomachenko than fighting Shakur or anybody else because it'd be a career high payday. And, you know, he could fight on the biggest stage possible in the sport against Javante. How much credit was Gervonta going to get if he won that fight, which I think he was going to win. And I think there was a good chance he could be the first guy to stop Lomachenko. A good amount of credit. Even though Lomachenko's 36, he's still a world champion, still a top five lightweight. So, you know, was going to give Tank credit for that. And it made sense for Lomachenko. But 
back in 2017, when this all kind of started, when they were both champions at 130, I remember Lomachenko told me on the boxing voice, uh, maybe one day Davis will fight me when I'm in a wheelchair. I went back on seconds out, same year, heading into Mayweather McGregor, told Tank what Loma has said. Maybe one day you'll fight him in a wheelchair. He responded that, well, Lomachenko's got a rush and I could take my times. Basically, he wasn't motivated to fight Loma then, like Loma's not motivated to fight him now. So call it a duck if you want from Lomachenko, that's fine. But the real number one versus number two fight in the division is undefeated Javante Davis against undefeated Shakur Stevenson, WBA, WBC unification. I see what Sean Zatel sees, what Jake Donovan sees, an opportunity to make another fight with another fighter who isn't courting retirement, who isn't thinking about walking away from the sport and lacking motivation. You can fight Shakur. What's the problem? And Shakur is a network and promotional free agent, so there are no politics or bureaucratic red tape you have to work through. Making a fight with him might actually be easier than making a fight with Vasil Lomachenko, because Vasil Lomachenko is still with top rank. Shakur is not. What's the problem? Or is the American media going to give Javante Davis another pass to avoid another fighter who's all in his prime? So desperate to put Javante Davis on a pedestal as America's best or one of America's best for being nothing more than just a protected fighter. Are you so desperate for an icon? Fallen from grace and fallen behind so far that this is the best you can muster. This is the best you can do. This is America's best. A fighter who waits seven years till a guy's waiting to retire. And now you want to fight him. What services as a microcosm for the general population and the American populace and the lack of integrity and redeemable qualities in its people and its athletes and the way that they navigate their careers. The reflection of their cowardice. Stylistically, the Lomachenko fight is a more favorable fight for Javante Davis because he's lost a step, he's slowed down. Even though he's still light on his feet and still a combination puncher, because he's slowed down, there's a greater probability that you could catch him with a power shot in between the combinations. That could happen, whereas Shakur, stylistically, that doesn't favor Javante Davis at all. That's why they don't want him. Because he's taller, he's longer, he's got speed, but he's not a combination puncher. What's gonna come at you is one and two punches at a time from a safe distance. It's gonna be up to you to close it, and it's gonna be a lot harder to close it against Shakur than it was against Frank Martin. As if those two fighters are cut from the same cloth. Shakur Stevenson and Frank Martin. There's a lot that's been said about Shakur Stevenson's last two fights and their entertainment value, that they weren't all that entertaining. But make no mistake, he's a quality operator. He's skilled and very good at what he does. Even if what he does isn't always entertaining, it could neutralize Javante Davis. Everybody's always talking about the bombs he throws. The bomb don't get the chance to go off against Shakur. It don't go off. Not for the shorter, stumpy a fighter who has to close the distance, who literally lost rounds to Roly Romero, more recently lost rounds round, round, to Frank round. Martin. You'll lose the fight Bye. against Bye. Shakur. Things fall apart with Vasil Lomachenko. I don't expect Team Davis to pursue Shakur. In spite of what Jake Donovan or Sean Zatel might recommend, Team Davis are a bunch of cowards.